Hi everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to take a look at solving, uh, Lep uh, solving differential equations using Laplace transforms. And the problem we're going to take a look at is uh, a simple ODE x dot plus 2x equals uh, 3 delta of t plus 5 as a forcing on the right hand side. We're going to uh, look at having rest initial conditions x of 0 minus is equal to 0. And we're asked to use Laplace transforms to solve this initial value problem. For part b, we're asked to have uh, the initial value problem without any delta function forcing on the right-hand side to give an, initial, uh, an equivalent initial value problem without a delta function forcing on the right-hand side, but yields the same solution as in part a. And then in question two, we're uh, asked to solve the differential equation, the second order differential equation, x dot dot plus 9x equals u of t with rest initial conditions. So x of 0 minus is 0. x dot of 0 minus is also 0. So I'll let you uh, work on this problem, and I'll be back in a moment. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. OK, so for part A, uh, the first step is to Laplace transform both sides of the equation. So we take the Laplace transform of x dot plus 2x, and that's going to be equal to the Laplace transform of 3 delta of t plus 5. And we can use the uh, distribution properties of the Laplace transform. So this is going to be Laplace transform of x dot plus 2 times the Laplace transform of x. On the right-hand side, we have 3 times the Laplace transform of the delta function plus 5 times the Laplace transform of 1. Now, we can replace the Laplace transform of x dot if we use the identity with s times the Laplace transform of x minus x at 0 minus. And we're told that x of 0 minus in this case is just 0. So this term is going to vanish. And just for brevity, I'm going to write x of s as the Laplace transform of x. So we now have s times x of s plus 2x of s equals, and on the right-hand side, we have 3 times the Laplace transform of the delta function. Laplace transform of the delta function is just 1. So we have 3 plus 5. And the Laplace transform of 1 is just 1 over s. So I can now factor the right-hand side, or the left-hand side. And I get x of s times s plus 2 equals 3 plus 5 over s. And note how when we have x of s multiplied by some polynomial in s, this is always going to be the characteristic polynomial. So if we look back, s plus 2 is the characteristic polynomial of x dot plus 2x. So this yields 3 divided by s plus 2 on the right-hand side, plus 5 divided by s times s plus 2. And for the second piece, we can use uh, partial fractions to decompose it uh, into a term uh, times s and a term times s plus 2. And when we do that, we end up getting 5 halves 1 over s minus 1 over s plus 2. So I can combine the 3 divided by s plus 2 with the minus 5 halves divided by s plus 2 into one term. So this gives me 1 half, 1 over s plus 2. And we, we also have 5 halves, 1 over s. And now we just take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides. So on the left-hand side, we recover x of t. So we get 1 half e to the minus 2t plus 5 halves. The inverse uh, Laplace transform of 1 over s is just t, or sorry, just 1. So we end up with x of t is 1 half e to the minus 2t plus 5 halves. 
And this solution is valid for t bigger than 0. Sometimes people write it as this quantity multiplied by a step function. And x of t is also 0 for t less than 0, for example. And it's just useful to quickly sketch what x of t looks like. So it's an exponential decay for t bigger than 0. And it's flat for t less than 0. So here's 0. Here's x of t. Okay, so for part, for part b now, we're asked to find a differential equation and new initial conditions uh, that reproduce the solution uh, for t bigger than 0. So note how uh, we'd be looking for a solution, x, uh, a new solution, x of t, which would be an exponential decay and uh, essentially would just grow. So we're looking at uh, initial conditions which uh, start at 0. If I were to write the original differential equation, so this is the original differential equation uh, from part a. looks like this. And just quickly to note that x dot near the origin is going to be approximately three times a delta function, which means in, in the original differential equation, x is going to have a jump of three about the origin. So the new IV initial value problem, well, we don't want the delta function on the right-hand side, so we're going to solve x dot plus 2x is equal to 5. But what initial conditions do we need? Well, we would need x of 0 minus to now be 3. So when we eliminate the 3 delta on the right-hand side, uh, we have to introduce new initial conditions so that the solution agrees uh, for t bigger than 0. OK, so this concludes part 1. For part 2, uh, we're asked to solve a, a new differential equation, x dot dot plus 9x equals u of t. And we're just going to follow the same procedure where we Laplace transform both sides. So Laplace transforming the left-hand side gives me x dot dot plus 9x equals the Laplace transform of u of t. And again, I can use the uh, formula which relates uh, derivatives of x uh, back to the Laplace transform of x. And so in this case, the Laplace transform of x dot dot is going to be s squared times the Laplace transform of x. And then I'm going to have plus uh, a term which involves x of 0 minus and a term which involves x dot of 0 minus. And uh, if your initial conditions were not 0, you would have to keep these terms in. However, in our case, these terms are both 0 because we deal with rest initial conditions. So I'm just not going to write them. Plus 9 x of s equals the Laplace transform of u of t is 1 of, over s. So again, we have x of s, uh, s squared plus 9. So note again how this is the same characteristic polynomial as in our differential equation is equal to 1 over s. So x of s is 1 over s, s squared plus 9, which we can use partial fractions now to decompose it into a over s plus bs plus c divided by s squared plus 9. And if I were to take a look at my notes, I have in this case, a is 1 ninth, b is negative 1 ninth, and c is equal to 0, if you were to work out these coefficients. So what this means is x of s is 1 ninth, uh, 1 over s, uh, minus uh, 1 ninth, 1 over s squared plus 9. And when we inverse 
invert the Laplace transform. Uh, the inverse of 1 over s is just 1. So x of t becomes 1 over 9. Uh, sorry, this should be s up here. The inverse Laplace transform of s divided by s squared plus 9 is cosine 3. So we end up with 1, negative 1 ninth cosine of 3t. And again, this is the solution for t bigger than 0. So as soon as we turn on the input, the function x of t starts growing continuously from 1 and then achieves uh, an oscillation with period 3. OK, so just to quickly recap, in this problem, we solved several ODEs, uh, several initial value problem ODEs using Laplace transforms. Laplace transforms are particularly nice because they convert uh, an ODE into an algebraic equation, which we can solve uh, fairly easily. The drawback is we sometimes have to manipulate, using partial fractions, the right-hand side into functions that we know how to invert uh, using the Laplace transform inverse. So I'll just conclude here, and I'll see you next time.